Canary by Cloud Nine and Three Quarters. Chapter 12 How It All Came Together. Midoriya wasn't usually one to feel much pride about himself, but yesterday had been the exception. He had actually sung to someone. Present Mike doesn't count. He always walked in partway through the song, so Midoriya didn't have to muster the courage to begin. All he had to do was not stop. With Shinso, it had been different. But Shinso, of all people, deserved it. For it was only because of him that Midoriya had been able to muster the courage to begin singing at all. Only because of him that he found his quirk. Now Midoriya had been thinking a lot about this, mainly because that was all he ever did. But why had he only discovered his quirk now? It must have manifested when he was younger, like everyone else, but he never came across the right conditions for it to present itself. Then there was the extra joint in his little toe, convincing him that there was no point in searching for a quirk anyway. His ability was a freak mutation. Perhaps he did inherit quirklessness from his parents, but a separate mutation resulted in a brand new quirk, stronger than any normally inherited powers. If finding that power was as simple as singing a song, why hadn't he found it before? Truly, everyone sings something at some point in their lives, including Midoriya. That thought was what led him to the discovery of another aspect of his quirk. He called it Euphoria Songs. As in happiness songs, questioned Shinso that Thursday afternoon as the two of them packed away their things at the end of the day. Granted, that task took an awful lot longer than usual if they were trying to sign at the same time. Yeah, a song which gives me a weak ability, a one that only makes other people happy. Or I suppose I could include songs which grant any other type of emotion, but I feel like happiness is the most common, Midoriya explained. So you think you never found your quirk before because the only songs you've ever sung only got a happiness power? I think it's most likely. Like, Happy Birthday, for instance. Or nearly any Christmas song. Or if you song, for example, Let It Snow when it's already snowing. Exactly! I have no idea my singing had anything to do with it. Or other song abilities could be narrowed down to coincidences. Or maybe I just didn't sing enough for some songs to activate my quirk. Shinzo smiled, pausing his signing so he could finish packing his bag. Slinging it over his shoulder, he said, I can't believe you have a quirk. Me neither! Then Doria signed in reply, bouncing to his feet as he also finished packing. On the radio station thing, too, continued Shinzo as they walked out of Class 1C. I went and listened to all your shows. You've got a bit of a fan base going on, you know that, right? Midoriya sighed audibly. Oh no! We made a social media account for Canary last Tuesday, and I already have so many followers. It's crazy. Shinzo huffed. The sports festival is going to be interesting, that's for sure. Midoriya nodded frantically, unsure whether that was a good thing or a bad thing. Why is it going to be interesting? It was a Raraka who had just joined the duo alongside Ida on their way down to the exit of the school. You'll see, was all Shinzo said in reply. As Araraka tried desperately to convince Shinso to tell her what he meant, Midoriya's thoughts returned to the radio show. It was Thursday, so he was due at the station soon, but he still had homework to do. If he arrived a little earlier than usual, perhaps he could do it in the waiting room whilst... He froze. Is something wrong, Midoriya? Questioned Ida, frowning and looking back as Midoriya desperately thrust his hands into all the various pockets of his clothing. Have you lost something? Guessed Araraka. Midoriya had pulled his bag off at this point, tipping out its contents in a distressed bid to locate it. Failing at that and putting his things away once more, Midoriya leapt to his feet and signed to Shinso. My key called! It's gone! Your. He glanced at the hero students. What key called? the radio station. I can't get in without it. Shinzo sighed. He's lost the key card for his flat. He lied. You guys go on ahead. I'll help him find it. Not questioning the oddity of having a key card for a flat rather than an ordinary key, Araraka and Ida immediately suggested that they should help too. It's fine, insisted Shinzo. You'll miss your trains. Anyway, I've been with Midoriya all day. It can't have gone far. See you tomorrow.
They weren't too keen to leave, but after registering the obvious dismissal by Shinso, the hero students waved goodbye and good luck in finding the card as they left the premises. Okay, did you take it out of school at any point? Shinso interrogated as soon as they were gone. Midoriya shook his head in a panic. Why did you even bring it to school? Because I wasn't sure if I wanted to stay behind and practice my quirk, and then go straight to the radio station. But then we got all that maths homework, and so I decided that maybe it would have been best if- Okay, stop. Shinso interrupted. Midoriya's hand movements had become so erratic that Shinso probably couldn't understand them anymore. Let's just retrace our steps. It must have fallen out of your pocket at some point today. What does it look like? Orange! With the name Canary written on it. Oh, of course it does. Shinzo sighed. Midoriya's eyes widened at the conclusion. If anyone found the card, they'd see the radio station logo and then the name Canary. If Midoriya went up to them asking for it back, then they'd know that he was Canary. Come on, let's try and find it before someone else does. Shinzo insisted. And so, with Ida not around to tell them off, they took off at a run up the corridors back to Class 1C. They scoured every inch of the classroom, but it was nowhere to be seen. Then the length of the hallways down to the lunch hall. Not there either. Not even the lunch hall itself gave any relief to their problem. But whilst Midoriya was seconds away from a panic attack, Shinzo was far less worried. You said you have Kokatu's number. Just tell him that you lost it, and I'm sure he'll let you in. They'll get you a new one. Eventually, Midoriya caved in and nodded. They walked back down from Class 1C after checking it for a third time about to leave the school when- No, look! It belongs to Canary! Midoriya and Shinzo froze. Just behind them, standing outside the doorway to Class 1B, a group of students crowded around a short girl with a black fringe so long that it rivaled what Kisho's used to look like. He'd cut it much shorter now, so it looked worse. Shinzo and Midoriya still called him Fringe in sign language anyway. Fringe 2.0 was rather short, so she held up what was in her hand high into the air for other classmates to see. A bright orange key card. Shinzo swore quietly. He grasped Midoriya's arm and pulled him over to the group, whilst Midoriya struggled to get away in fear that Shinzo would expose him. Hey, what's that? Shinzo questioned, wearing one of the best poker faces Midoriya had ever seen. It's Canaries! Fringe 2.0 explained excitedly. Who? Shinzo frowned. Midoriya was staring at him in awe. He was very good at this acting shtick. From the radio show? Scoffed one of the other girls. Seriously, have you been living on a rack or something? Shinzo rolled his eyes at her. Well, whoever he is, I'm sure he'll want that back. Why don't you go give it to Principal Nezu or something? Well, you two clearly don't know who Canary is, so allow me to explain. He's a guy in our year or the one above, and he's becoming uber famous. He has a secret identity, so whoever comes and asks for this card back must be Canary, and... Are you supposed to be hero students? Shinzo snapped. There was a bit of a crowd forming around them now. It seemed like quite a few people were interested in who Ganeri was. The argument between Shinso and the group of Class 1B girls grew more escalated. Eventually, a girl with bright orange hair and a ponytail came in between them to back with Shinso, suggesting they should take the card to a teacher and leave Canary alone. Midoriya, meanwhile, had decided that he should suck up the courage and take this matter into his own hands. He left Shinzo's side unbeknownst to anyone else and crept around the crowd to the other side where Fringe 2.0 was standing with the key card. Shinzo caught Midoriya's eye and realized what he was trying to do. So, Shinzo lunged forward in an apparent attempt to take the card. The girl backed away a little, holding the card behind her back. It was right in Midoriya's face. Shinzo, of course, could have easily used his quirk on her to force her to hand the card over, but Midoriya wasn't the only one hesitant to use his quirk. So, Midoriya was now in the corner of the crowd directly behind where Fringe 2.0 had backed up to, away from Shinzo. Midoriya was blocked from view of as many members of the crowd as he could hope for. So, as Shinzo caught his eye once again and lunged forward at the girl, Midoriya took that moment of surprise and snatched the card from her hand, thrusting it into his pocket without anyone noticing. Shinzo cried out in fake frustration. Fine, you do you. He hissed. I seriously can't be bothered to meddle with any more hero course problems. 
He looked to the side to see Midoriya there as if he'd never left. Come on, let's get out of here. He grumbled and the two left without another word. They turned the corner as they heard a frantic shout from behind them. Hey, where'd the gun go? Midoriya and Shito exchanged glances, struggling to hold back the laughter. You did get it, right? Shinzo confirmed, hesitating at the bottom of the stairs. Midoriya waved the orange card at him. I am a master pickpocket! That's not at all worrying. They hesitated, turning slowly toward the origin of the voice just behind them up the stairs. It was another girl with deep purple hair and oddly shaped earlobes. Were those ox cords attached to her skin? We're going to give it to the principal, Shinso insisted without missing a beat. Sure, said the girl raising an eyebrow. And you don't sound exactly like Canary. Trust me, I always remember her voice. Midoriya tried desperately to reply, but his voice just got stuck in his throat again. So he did the next best thing and lifted his fingers to his lips in a bit to keep her quiet. She smiled. Don't worry, I won't tell anyone. Canary. They began walking together as Midoriya slipped the card securely into his pocket once more. What was your name? Shinso questioned after a while. Jiro, she replied. You? I'm Shinso. This is Midoriya. Midoriya gave a feeble wave. He was still a little glum that he had been foolish enough to let the card get out of his sight in the first place and that it had ended up like this. Midoriya? Jiro frowned. As in Urabaka's friend? I thought you were mute? Okay, how many people has Urabaka talked to about Midoriya? Shinzo sighed, voicing Midoriya's thoughts. <laughs> oh, we were just talking about people from other classes, and you were brought up in conversation. Then you were all talking to each other after the USJ attack. It was something to defer the conversation to, rather than think about everything that had just happened, she explained. Oh, okay. That's a little less terrifying, thought Midoriya as the three of them left UA. So, anyway, you were on the radio tonight, right? Jiro asked Midoriya. He nodded hesitantly. Are you going to sing this time? Midoriya blinked at her, furrowing his brow. Hey, I'm following you on social media, Jiro continued. Have you even read the comments about you? You have like an entire hashtag, dude. Everyone who's heard of you wants to know who you are. And if they're not talking about that, they're talking about your quirk. Midoriya looked at his feet, kicking at the gravel as they walked. Sorry. Jiro said suddenly, about following you guys and seeing the key card. I saw you take it. But, yeah, sorry. I have a hearing quirk, so I usually end up knowing things people like to keep under wraps. They stopped at the crossroads, the one where Shinso parted ways with Midoriya normally. Jiro turned towards the other road, about to leave. I'm good at keeping secrets, she insisted. But even you can't keep this hidden forever. The sports festival's just around the corner. And they'll know who you are by then. So, yeah, just bear it in mind. Midoriya nodded, giving her a little bow in thanks rather than saying it out loud. She nodded in reply as well before turning and walking away, plugging one of her earphone jacks into her phone instead of having to both with tangled wires. Shinzo bit his lip, thinking hard about something before turning back to Midoriya. She must be another hero student, he realized. Might be our classmate in the future. Yours, maybe, Midoriya mumbled. I'm not sure about me. You'll be great in the sports festival, Midoriya, Shinzo told him in determination. Not if I can't sing. You sung to me. You were great. But that was different. I trust you. What do you need to trust me for? Questioned Shinzo. Midoriya stopped fiddling with his fingers, looking up at him in confusion. So you trust me is not tell anyone that you're an amazing singer with an incredibly powerful quirk? It's not as if your secret is a bad thing. And if you're embarrassed by it, think of me. To get people to talk to me so I can activate my quirk, I usually have to insult them. So everyone hates me by default. He laughed sadly. I don't hate you, Midoriya contradicted quietly. Shinzo sighed and smiled. My point is, you literally have a fan base, and it'll be even bigger by tonight. Whatever you end up doing, it'll be fine. Midoriya gave him a meek smile in return. It was getting late. 
They'd killed a lot of time searching for the key card, but if Midoriya hurried, he'd be able to catch the next train back to his house with enough time to spare to clean up and change if he wanted to stick to his doing his homework at the radio station idea. And so, still feeling rather down, Midoriya bids Shinso goodbye and ran the rest of the way to the train station. He didn't take his key card to school for a while after that. Present Mike's radio show! Tuesdays and Thursdays, 18.30 to 19.30. Canaries Hour. Present Mike. Yeah! Canary. <laughs> Present Mike. It's 6.30! And we all know what that means! Canary. Um, uh, I'm here! Present Mike. Canaries Hour is upon us! Canary. Hi! <laughs> Present Mike. Last time! On Tuesday, that is, we left off with the birth of Canary's little social media account, and it is already verified! Canary. It is? Present Mike. Yeah! Have you not looked at it? Canary. I, I, um, occasionally, but I have schoolwork to do, and... Present Mike. And that definitely wasn't last minute homework I saw you doing in the waiting room earlier! Canary. Hey, it was set today. It's due next week. Present Mike. Wait, so why were you doing it in such a hurry? Canary. S so I could get it done before the radio show started? Present Mike. But you have all week to do it! Canary. But I, by which time I'll have more homework? How are you supposed to do all work the day it's set unless you're overwhelmed? Present Mike. Well, most of my students don't! Canary. I'm one of your students! Present Mike. You're fluent in English, you know doubt! Canary. You still give me homework! Present Mike. That's because you ask for it! Canary. Everyone else is doing it? I, I might as well too! Present Mike. Okay, well, you're a way better student than I ever was! Canary. Th thank you. Present Mike. Moving on. Let's have a look at the growing pile of questions, shall we? Canary. Oh, okay. Present Mike. And the first thing I see is a super long paragraph. Canary. Is it that long? Present Mike. Says the guy who does English essays for fun. Canary. Present Mike. Cutting to the chase. Music lover, great name, asks this. We all know you go to UA and you're planning to go to the Hero Course with the Sports Festival. But how are we going to know who you are? Are you planning to show yourself in the beginning or after the festival starts? Canary. Oh, um. Present Mike. They also say that they can't wait to see you and they'll be watching at home and rooting for you. Canary. Thank you. Um, right. Uh, well, my quirk's kind of tricky. Uh, uh, and it's rather unique, too. I think you'll know who I am when I start using it. Where's that mic? Canary has an awesome singing quirk! Like when a guy who's singing and that's him! Canary. Oh, um, yeah, I suppose. Where's that mic? Next question! Canary, you pick! Canary. Uh, okay. Um, this is from I Evening Star. They ask, uh, how do you have the courage to go on the radio? Isn't it scary? Uh, I'm afraid to go on stage, and I wanted to ask you how you do it. Can you help me? Where's that mic? Canary's the wrong person to ask! Canary. Uh, I am... I have really bad anxiety. Social situations just make me freeze up. Like stage fright only constantly. The radio feels different though. It, it was scary at first, but after a while it just feels like I'm just talking to talking to Present Mike. By the way, if one more person calls me Mr. Kakitu, it's called one more time! Canary soft laughter can be heard. Where's that mic? I can tolerate you, but everyone! 
Canary. Because <laughs> that might d- d- distracts me from my nervousness by making me talk about something else. But that's where the random barks come in. Present Mike. Wait! I need my dose of random trivia! Go, Canary, go! Canary. Uh, uh, um, you can't just put me on the spot like that. Wait! Um, Present Mike. While Steve panics in the corner for a moment, let me tell you what I told Canary before our first radio show. Everyone gets nervous. Even the pro heroes coming in as guests get scared of the thought of coming in here. But what I find helps is telling yourself that you're not nervous. You're excited. Excited to get it over and done with, perhaps. But the two emotions are surprisingly similar, and I find this helps a lot. Canary looks at his side with himself. Do we have a fact? Canary. A group of canaries is called an aria. Present Mike. That's a lie! Canary. No, it's not! Present Mike. It's a flock! Surely! Canary. Uh, and a group of cockatoos is called a chattering! Present Mike. Oh, come on! That can't be true! That sounds ridiculous! Canary. You're supposed to be an English teacher! Present Mike. Wait! I'm looking it up! Wait! Distant typing is heard before a pause and a gasp. Present Mike. Why are you always right? Canary laughs again. Present Mike. Right, one more question and then we'll move on to our next song. Canary. Oh, okay. Present Mike. Now, speaking of songs, I've collected into a little bundle here many, many people asking the same question. So, let's just choose a random representative. Then ring 15, and they ask, can you sing us a song? Canary. Canary, <laughs> what? Present Mike. You! Let me look up any screeching cockatoo video on the internet, and that's about as close as you're going to get. Canary. Um, I, I don't know. Present Mike. You don't have to. No worries. But you're a great singer. He's really good, listeners. Canary. I- I'm sorry, but I-, I... Present Mike. You're going to have to wait until the sports festival for that one, folks. But it's not far away, so we won't have to wait long. In the meantime, let's have some music. You okay there, Canary? Question Present Mike as they both took off their headphones. Midoriya had told his teacher about the incident with the key card earlier. He mentioned everything, including how Jiro found out, excluding what she said about his singing. I'm going to have to sing in the sports festival, he said, aware how how quiet his voice was. But I don't know if I can. Sure you can, President Mike exclaimed. You're going to be awesome, and you know it! Midoriya didn't say anything, just staring dolefully at the questions on his computer screen. We've got three more shows, not including this one, until the sports festival starts. Present Mike reminded him. That's plenty of time! Look how far you've come already! Keep up this rate of progress and you'll be ready for sure! Midoriya didn't feel so convinced. You can always try! He looked up at Present Mike. Try singing? He repeated with a stutter. I'm not sure if you noticed, but there's another radio room that can be accessed off the waiting room. It's got another little window with blinds over it. It it does? Yeah! I guess you might have thought that it was just part of this room, but it's separate and completely soundproof. Your girl won't reach outside the room so you can sing whatever you want. Granted, it doesn't destroy the place. Minoria hesitated, ever conscious of the song playing on the radio as the time ticked by. But what if I make a fool of myself? You won't! insisted President Mike. How many times had you sung something seriously before I walked in on you singing the one that gave you wings? He wavered, thinking back over the times he'd activated his quirk. Um, that was the fourth time. And you were awesome! Just think! With that little practice, you were that good! And you've been singing an awful lot recently after school! Perhaps you're even better now! 
President Micah exclaimed. Plus, we can always make you sound better. Midoriya couldn't help but laugh at that. <laughs> it's fine. You don't have to. There was a pause before President Mike said, So, you'll do it? Midoriya didn't meet his eyes. I, I, I want to, but I'm nervous. I'll, you're not nervous? He suddenly exclaimed. Midoriya blinked at him. You're excited! Silence follows the song as the music dies out before President Mike laughs in a muggingly villainous tone. Canary. This is a bad idea! President Mike. He has been convinced! Canary. Oh, I am feeling less convinced by the second! President Mike. He's going to sing! This is not a drill! Canary. This is so weird. I'm in a different room now, so my quick corn effect cockatoo. But I can still hear him over the radio. It's strange not being able to see him. President Mike. He's distracting himself. I told you distractions help. Canary. Uh, this is a mistake. President Mike. No pressure. No one's pressuring you. We're all good. And if you want to make out my song, that's fine. But we're all ready for you. Canary. Uh, thanks. President Mike. He does the song. And I feel like this is him trying to tell us something. Canary. I also have no idea what my quirk's going to do with it. So maybe this isn't such a good idea. President Mike. That'll be fine. What's the worst that can happen? A brief moment of silence follows. Canary. By my radio station. President Mike. No, with this song. Canary. I suppose that would require qu quite a stretch of the, the, the imagination. President Mike. We're confusing everyone talking about your quirk. Canary. I'm not telling anyone. You'll have to find out y yourselves. President Mike. Ah! The suspension is killing us all! Canary. Well, well, I don't know what I'm doing. President Mike. I'm going then. Canary. Wait, what? President Mike. I'm turning my mic off. Listening. The music will start soon. Have fun. Canary. Why? No. What? Why? Canary. Oh, okay. This is happening. Please don't hate me for this. Silence falls. Where is the moment when needed the most? Midoriya almost couldn't believe the words were falling from his mouth. He was alone in the small studio booth, singing to the microphone that hung over his head. He clutched onto his headphones, almost pressing the backing track closer to his ears as he continued to sing. Tell me your blue skies fade to gray. President Mike had shown him the list of songs they were scheduled to play that evening. He hadn't lied when he said that this was the one he chose. But it also so happened to be one of the ones they were going to use anyway. Perhaps it fitted into one of those euphoria songs, he mentioned, lighting the mood of others. Maybe it did the opposite. But Minoria wasn't focused on what his quirk would do. It didn't matter anyway. He wasn't focusing on using it on himself, and no one was in earshot enough for it to affect them. His power wouldn't travel over the radio. He'd already tried that. You fake in a smile with the coffee to go. That reminded him of Shinzo. He didn't know why. Maybe it was the coffee, but Shinzo really liked his caffeine. It probably really disturbed his sleep schedule. Maybe that was the point. What did matter was that, Gork or no, Midoriya could feel a smile stretching across his face as he was lost to the tune. That was all that mattered now. He almost forgot in that moment that hundreds, maybe even thousands, probably thousands, of people were listening to him too. Cause you had a bad day, you're taking one down, you sing a sad song just to turn it around. And maybe this was turning his day around. That smile of his grew wider. The true meaning of the song, or whatever its lyrics were meant to convey, just didn't matter anymore. 
All that did was the confidence that brewed steadily in Midoriya's chest how that mental barrier between thoughts and words simply crumbled as he sung. Perhaps this time it wouldn't be so hasty to build itself up again. Because, after all, what difference would the sports festival make after singing here? The only difference then would be that people could see him as well as hear him. You had a bad day. President Mike was grinning. He smiled so wide at heart and continued to earn all the way through the song. He wondered how his little canary was faring. He didn't sound nervous. That thought made him smile even wider. They'd given him a sheet of lyrics, which Eozora hastily printed off for him. But the lack of the distinct sound of flapping paper made Yamada wonder if Midoriya had even bothered with it. Well, you need a blue sky holiday. Perhaps it was part of his quirk, remembering lyrics. That would explain how he was able to remember such obscure facts. Then again, that could just be Midoriya's above-average intelligence shining through. President Mike was almost sad at the thought of Canary leaving his form group. But the world would be missing out on an incredible little hero if he didn't. You had a bad day. Shinzo was sitting in his room scrolling through the various Canary hashtags that Earphone Girl had mentioned. People really did seem like they enjoyed listening to him. Shinzo didn't blame them. He did too. He always knew what to say, even if he didn't say it out loud often enough. He glanced at the clock. Wait, isn't Midoriya's radio show on at the moment? Shinzo had never listened to it live, considering Midoriya had only told him about it the day before. He hastily found the Put Your Hands Up Radio website to tune in, struggling with his earplugs in the process. He envied Jiro. She didn't have this problem. His eyes whitened when he eventually turned up the volume. You really don't mind. You had a bad day. Midoriya was singing. There was always music playing in the Jiro household. She blamed her parents. They were musicians after all. They had always been quite fond of President Mike's radio show. They said he ran his hero agency well. And if Jiro ended up a hero like him, they'd be more than proud. Jiro didn't see it. Rosette Mike was always too... allowed for her liking. What she did like was when Canary joined the radio ensemble. He was a real breath of fresh air and painstakingly relatable. That was why she found herself joining the crowd surrounding the Class 1B girl with Canary's keycard. She would have stepped in. But that Shinso guy beat her to it, and she was kind of interested into where this would lead. That was when she saw the bundle of green hair snatch the card away from right under their noses, and then rematerialize next to Shinso like he'd learned how to hide in plain sight from a young age. Naturally, she followed them. She'd expected them to take the card straight to the principal, so imagine her surprise when she heard Midoriya's voice. It was Canary's voice! So she bottled away her inner fangirl and confronted them about it. And gosh, Canary was exactly the same in real life as he was on the radio, only perhaps a little more timid, if that were possible. You kick up the leaves and the magic is lost. And wow, he really could sing. It was like... As soon as the music started, a switch was flipped inside of him and all those anxieties and worries just faded away as the song swelled into being. Tiro wished she had that confidence. Talking was one thing, something that Minoria couldn't seem to do well. But singing? Canary had the whole thing backwards. You work out a smile and you go for a run. She looked forward to seeing what he could really do. Midoriya was on the radio. Mute, sweet little Midoriya was singing on the radio. Araraka stared at the wall, the music playing softly across her apartment. You had a bad day. Midoriya was canary. 
Inko blew her nose, tossing the tissue into the growing mountain beside her. This was the first time she'd ever heard her son truly sing. And it was beautiful. The music faded out and Midoriya sung his last note. The problem with that song was that it faded out rather than having a definite ending. So we had to make one up. It couldn't have gone too badly. Or it could have been horrendous. Those were the only two explanations for the literal radio silence that followed the ending of the music. Present mic. Yeah! Canary. Ah! No! Stop building in my ears when I'm not expecting it! P please! Present mic's roaring laughter is heard. Present mic. You did it! Canary. Oh, yay! Present Mike. No! You need to do a proper one! Canary. A proper What? Present Mike clears his throat. Canary. Warning newly noted. Present Mike. Yeah! Canary. Yes, he finished. I took up my headphones. Wait, yes, he's finished. Present Mike. Canary. Do I really have to? Present Mike. No! Kids Harry takes a deep breath. Canary. Yeah! Silence. Present Mike. Did you just. He just sang that! That was awesome! Canary. I am never doing that again! Present Mike. What? No! Canary, can I come back now? Present Mike. I guess. Canary, what do you mean you guess? Present Mike. Well then, let's have another musical interval as we save Canary from the little soundproof booth. Canary, this next song better be from a musical. As the Disney song began to play over the radio, Midoriya let the wireless headphone hang loose around his neck as he opened the door to see President Mike standing there waiting for him. Hop He yelled, holding out his hand to do just that. Midoriya beamed and he stood through himself into a hug. Aww! Exclaimed Erizor from across the room. Everything about that is adorable. Thank you. Midoriya whispered. Present Mike hugged him back. You're the one doing all the work, little co-host. Canary needs a matching leather jacket, interjected Aozora. That would make him even more adorable. Seriously, your listeners don't know what they're missing out on. But can I have a hot five now? Exclaimed Present Mike as they finished their hug. Aozora filmed Midoriya jump up to reach his hand. After the sports festival, I'm busting this. The blueskin woman grinned as she replayed her video to Nagano. How are you feeling about the sports festival now, Canary? Present my question as they walked back over to the main studio. Midori smiled. I, I think I'm ready. Songs used in this chapter. Bad Day by Daniel Powter.